Sheriff Ozzy Knezovich talks with community leaders about issues in the public safety arena, sponsored by River Ridge Hardware. Well, welcome to the Sheriff's Report. The what? The Sheriff's Report. I'm Kent Adams, and I'm sitting in to ask some questions of our sheriff today. It's also an exclusive one-on-one -on, -one on what's been going on. Perhaps you've read, perhaps you've seen on TV and so forth, the issue with Craig Chamberlain and his firing uh, last week. We're going to talk about that, and we're going to talk about what the real story is. You've seen a press conference, you've heard from some of the media, you've not been getting all the facts and information. We'll talk with the sheriff right after this. Hi, this is Larry Myers. Normally at River Ridge Hardware, here at Peter's Hardware, where I've been blessed to be able to buy it. Initially started in 1934 by Bill Peters, and I was blessed to be able to purchase that from the Peters family. Peters Hardware is located at 12118 East Sprague, enter off of Pines and First. We have all the quality home products that you need, including Quality paint now, where we can match any color that you want. We're here for you for all your home needs. Come on by to Peter's Hardware in Spokane Valley. Let's start from the very beginning, and that is you are not running for re-election. Yeah, I don't think that one stuck into a lot of people's heads yet, but... I am not running for re-election. Yeah. Yes, okay. So all that we're going to talk about is not really political, okay? So no, it's me doing my job. Doing your job, okay. Let's, let, we've talked about this in the past. You have, over the course of how many years as sheriff? April 11th will be 16 years. 16 years, okay. You fired quite a few. Almost 90. Almost 90, okay. Why were they fired? We're violating the values and standards and procedures and sometimes the laws of either our agency or the state of Washington. Have any of those ever been political? You know, Kent, when I hear this political thing, we actually had this discussion at my command level. Right. When we were discussing what to do with Mr. Chamberlain. Right. And they said, Sheriff, if you fire him, he's going to claim that this is all political. Yes. And I said, look, any time I do a termination, they, it could be painted that way. And then sometimes they have been painted that way. I cannot worry about that. Because the minute I start making my decisions on these matters based on political right. and politics, I'm no longer serving the people. No. I'm no longer doing my no. job. No, because we elected you exactly. to do the job. To clean up some things that had needed cleaning up. Exactly. Too. Okay. So I I look at it this way. I have a duty to the citizens, and I have a duty to the men and women who work in the, the sheriff's office right. to hold people to the values and standards and policies and procedures that we say mean something to us. Yes. So the day that I make a political decision on a termination is the day I become just another politician. Yeah. I refuse to do that. I weigh everything on their merits. And I make the decisions based on the law and the facts before me. Right. Yes. And I've come to know, know you over the last, what, six or seven years uh, uh, because you come in. Wherever we've been located, you come right. in to do these programs. And someone asked me the other, or said something to the effect that, well, that's probably a political decision. And my snap reaction was, Ozzy never does anything for politics. He's the most honest person I've met, okay? Yeah. I may not agree with you 100% of the time, and probably nobody does. Maybe your wife. Well, mm, no, okay. I can trust you on that one. But, but you know Kent, what I mean? Yeah, but Kent, here's the, the thing that they don't understand, is that, oh, it's, it was for politics. Well, that was said about the very first termination I made. Yes. Oh, he did it just to show, you know, out of politics. No, I fired him because he exposed himself to a barista. 
uh, let's get real here, folks. Um, this whole politics thing, I, I, and I get it. I mean, that's an easy is, thing to throw you know, out these the, days. The people have become really jaded, yeah. and it's yes. like, well, it's all politics. No, it's not. I, or those in within that 90 people, I have fired some very, very close and dear friends. Yes. Because they did not uphold the standards. Yes. That's how you get terminated in the agency. It's not done for politics. Right. And, you know, that's what was the first thing that Mr. Chamberlain claimed? Politics. Oh, it's 100% politics. Yeah. Well, I guess on, on, I think it was KHQ last night, he backed away from that one and went, well, it's plausible it could be. Yes. Well, it's not. Because I'll ask you a question, Ken. Okay. I know it's your interview, but I'm going to ask you the question. Okay. If you had been under a investigation by your employer okay. for three and a half months, yes, you had already had one disciplinary hearing about on that? the matter. Okay. You gave some information. The sheriff went, "Oh, okay. I'm going to check that out." And you're on admin leave during the next month. You know your next disciplinary hearing's coming. Would you file to run for office a couple of days before that disciplinary hearing? No, I don't think so. I would do all I can to have the cleanest record ever, ever. And, and have you come to me and say, your record is really clean. Yeah. I like what you've done and so forth, yeah. yes. So who played politics here? Yeah. I can assure you it wasn't me. I mean, he's the one that filed for office uh, days before his disciplinary hearing, okay. in which he... Knowing he had the hearing? Knowing that he was okay. heading for that hearing. He knew the, the hearing date. Sure. He files that week, and he wants to claim he didn't know he was going to get terminated. A month prior, this individual turned all his gear in prior to the first disciplinary hearing. Okay. And before that hearing, he had been given the offer to retire in lieu of termination. Okay. Now, does that sound like this guy didn't know the possible outcome of the second hearing? But this isn't the first time, because I remember when I was at Fox 28, worked with Craig, and he's well known in the community. That was his job at one point, but then he was removed from that position, right? In around 2014, 2015, uh, because of his, his substance abuse issues, because of um, we had another complaint in January of 2014 where somebody sent in a, a complaint that read basically this. Here is the face of the agency all over YouTube drinking out of a fake penis. I'm outraged. I'm sending this all to the media. Craig was counseled about that one. A few months later, he was removed from being, quote, unquote, the face of the agency. Right. He hasn't been that for over eight years. Right. And that, it kind of really bothers me that our, our media yeah. keeps running with that line of the face. Right. Because our media here knows about Craig. They know about his antics. For years, I've had reporters talk to me about this stuff. Right. And suddenly, um, some of the outlets want to go... Um, well, they got amnesia suddenly. Yeah, yeah. And I don't get that. I don't understand it. And there's a point where I, I have to go. Where's the ethics anymore? Well, I'll tell you. That's one of the one of the reasons because um, my biggest complaint of news here in town is uh, from the written news to the media broadcast news is that often things are slanted, and they're slanted not so much of what they say, but what they don't say. They don't tell really both sides of the story, and and so. In our mind, news matters, and we need to tell the full story. So that's what we're doing today, and we'll be doing a lot more of it. In fact, our goal here is in the next year and a half to be the number one news station in Spokane and tell what really is going on. Um, and, and we're headed that way. Our numbers are looking good. Um, okay, so Craig was disciplined and, and changed in, in terms of his res responsibilities and so forth. Um, what... What have been some of the questions that the media has been asking you that you just kind of shake your head at, that they don't get it? I, I, they, they don't seem to uh, get the concept of 
um, he wasn't the head uh, of the agency as, as far as the the face of the agency right, and right. things like this. Mark Gregory's been the PIO for right. a, a good decade right. plus. He's a good guy. And so they, they're, it's like, what are you doing here? Why are you giving this platform that doesn't exist because the man was removed from that duty because of his actions? How could the, the sheriff's office afford to have that type of individual be the quote unquote face of the agency yeah. and have it all blow up one day when he did something really bad. How much of that though is Craig getting opportunities, taking opportunities to get in front of cameras and go to classrooms and you know what I mean? And do the, some of those things though. Craig, you uh, know? Craig was a very major self promoter. Yes. This was not sure. done for the face of the agency. Yeah. This was done for the, sh the, the, the face of Craig. Right. And there was a lot of people within the sheriff's office were very upset about that. And I heard a, about it ad nauseum. Yes. And, you know, they're like, uh, this, this is not good. And we, again, we had to remove him because yeah. of his antics. One question I had, well, then why didn't you fire him? Well, before you fire somebody, you try to work with them, try right. to correct them, try to, we tried to salvage Craig's career okay good. and it it continued to I, think, I think as bosses if yeah. you will we all have that we, we responsibility we, to we try want to, to right. do what's right try to fix uh people's weaknesses right but you know can't what another thing that they don't seem to want to tell people and they've been and this is what they've been told this multiple times this was the second disciplinary issue Craig had in less than a year. Okay. The first one was in March of 2021. Okay. And an individual, uh, an ex-girlfriend of his came in, very concerned that this guy could ever become sheriff, uh, came in with allegations of drug use, uh, allegations of, of a lot of different things. Uh, I don't have that one in front of me, so I'm not going to try to do that by memory. But here's the thing. We ended up disciplining him at 40 hour suspension okay. for felony delivery of a controlled substance to her. Had the prosecutor prosecuted him, we would have fired him. You, would, you have no choice. We, and, right. And with that felony violation, we issued a 40 hour suspension and and then within a few months in November, we're back here. Let me ask a question because I think that brings up a good point and I don't know, that's what I wanna know and I think the public would like to know too. When you get those accusations, is it just you that reviews it? What's the process that the individual gets? And, and because people are sort of assuming that, well, he, here is your opportunity, you jumped on something to fire him because he's going up against the candidate that you support and I support too. Okay, I'm going to be public and, and say it out loud. Uh, I don't have a problem with my personal. Uh, uh, I met with John Knowles the other day. Good guy, great background. I like him. He's very solid. He's got the experience and so forth. I made my decision, not based an open mind because you like him. But my, based on my sitting down with him for 45 minutes and, and chatting with him. But what, you know, a complaint comes in. How is that handled internally? You know, the plate, uh, complaint comes in, it's given to an investigator. The okay. investigator uh, investigates it. Okay. Uh, Do you even know about it at that on, point? Yes, I get okay. briefed on the investigations. Okay. okay. And I get weekly, my command team gets weekly updates on investigations. Okay. Once it's all done, we run around the, the command table, we talk about it, hence, you know, if you do that, Sheriff, he's gonna claim politics. Yes. And, you know, then we, I, it's up to me to make a decision. Okay. I talk to my legal advisors, I talk, uh, make sure that we have all the bases covered. Yeah, ducks in And a then row. I make a, a decision on right. it. And the, the decision on this one was fairly simple. And, you know, for this, this whole, uh, you know, you jumped on him. Let, let me get this straight for you. Yeah. Craig Chamberlain has been rumbling about running for sheriff since 2013. Yeah. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, that means he was talking about running against me. 
in 2014, we have this major complaint about him on YouTube, and you can still find that on YouTube. Okay. It's, it's titled, Spokane's Finest Deputy Craig Chamberlain's Training vid Video, and it's horrible. It kills me that that is on a public accessible site that this guy is, is doing the things he's doing on that video. And there are children in that video. Okay. He is drinking out of a fake penis, oh. and it, it's appalling. So knowing that he was going to run against me, and then, then suddenly he, he joins my campaign in 2014, and then the same thing in 2018. I hear in 2016 he's going to run against me in 18. Um, in 2018, he joins my campaign. During that time frame, I get a call from a Valley businessman, Ozzy's, Craig's coming out to um, you know, interview for us, and he's going to run against you. And I'm like, wait a minute, he's on my team, team, team. This can't, that, that can't be. He says, no, Ozzy, it's happening. Can't, if, if I had a political bone in my body on this, I would have done away with Craig in 2014. Yeah. When I, I, I had the ability to do it right then and there. I haven't. But you tried I to do rehabilitate. I do that, and I tried to save his career. And if Craig was honest, yeah. he would tell people, yes, the, sh the sheriff really tried to save my career. Yeah. Even though behind his back I did all these things. Yeah. And uh, so tell me about politics. Yeah. If I wanted to, well, it's a to, political, it's if a I political year. If I wanted to year. fire him, I could have fired him in the political year of 14. Right. I could have fired him at this year, or, or I mean, should say last year, when the first complaint came in and he committed a felony. Yeah. If I want, because he was talking about running then. So let's get this straight. Craig Chamberlain and all this nonsense that he's putting out, all political, let's be honest, Craig. If you really told the truth, you would be going, yeah, the sheriff has worked a decade trying to salvage my career. Yeah. And we have. And there's your politics for you, yeah. folks. Yeah. That's the politics. I don't do things like that because I made a promise to myself, and period, that, that I would the, not be that type of leader. And to the public. And to the public. Yes. But, you know, I promised I would never be that leader. Yeah. You can do and say what you want about me, and I have promoted people who have done that. So let's get off this politics garbage. Right, let's right. get down to what really happened here, and this is a violation of our standards. Okay. You lie, you're gone. Yeah. Wish that would happen in some of the private sector things that we do too. You know, I mean, we, we've got that situation that's, I, I'm not sure where ethics have gone anymore. Our uh, ethics can have became in jeopardy in around 2007 when the state Supreme Court said it's okay to lie. Lying is protected speech. Yes. And I will, I'll guarantee you the founding fathers are spending their graves when they yeah. said that. Yeah. They said it's okay to lie in a campaign. Yes. And yes. then they, a couple of years later they yep. said that there is no clear defined public doctrine that a police officer has to tell the truth. That's why in 2013 and 2014, all 39 sheriffs tried to change a law, yes. police reform, yes. that said, if you lie or commit a crime on duty, you You're, cannot get your job back. Yeah. If we prove it and we've done our job correctly. Right, right. Okay, so there's where your ethics went. The day the Supreme Court made those rulings, Yes is the day we became in jeopardy. Yes, it's time to get more conservative Supreme Courts, both statewide and U.S. Supreme Court. Well, any and conservative attorneys out there, you better start running for office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But who would want to today? I mean, let's face it, really, in running for any office, If you it's believe tough. in this country, you would. Yes. Yeah. I'll guarantee you that. Yeah. The only reason I do what I do is because I believe in the people out there. Yeah. I believe in this community. Yeah. I, I have stayed, I was going to retire in 18. I stayed because right. I believed in this community. Yeah. And I believed that we needed to have somebody that was willing to step up and push it back against the false narratives of police abuse. Yes. 
uh, force and all this because it's a lie, folks. I'm tired of hearing all that, and it's from a certain sector of our community. Exactly. Well, we've got the two on either sides, on either ends, but we've got folks out there who want to lie and want to do all these things. And, and I mean, I've been personally attacked for being conservative and taking on some people in town. It's, it's you know... I think we need to be able to speak out and and talk about things publicly, but not take on and go after people. And I know we're running out of time. There's, yes. there's one thing. Craig Chamberlain says that the sheriff has never said what uh, lies he told. If you listen to my press conference yesterday, I outlined a lot of them. Yes. But I'm I'm going to do this right now. This is to Craig Chamberlain. Mr. Chamberlain, any time you want to sit down, since you want to try this out in the public, right. you want to sit down, we'll sit down with Kent. Yes. Come in, we'll sit Absolutely. down. Absolutely. I'll go through and see all these tabs, folks. All these yeah. tabs are where Craig has made one statement or another, and it came out to be, well, that wasn't exactly true either. Yeah. So, Craig... Any time. Kent has a phone number. I have a phone number. Yep. Get with Kent. He can schedule it. We'll come in on film, and we'll go through yes. this. Since you want to do this in public, let's do it now. I agree. I agree with I was going to offer that as well, so I'm glad you did. Ozzy, thank you. Number one, thank you for your leadership for 16 years, almost 16 years, coming up here pretty soon, and for being one of the most honest and trustworthy people I know in this town, even though you're in a political office. I mean, that's the, the, the state of affairs, but uh, you have not approached it as political. I see that. There are a lot of people out there that see that, and I think hopefully more people have seen that today. Thank you for all that you do. And most importantly, too, for your staff, okay? Because they get the brunt of all the negative stuff out there. They put their lives on, on the line every single day. And so uh, um, I appreciate that. And I know the majority of this community appreciate that as well for both our, our deputies and our sheriff and our police policemen and women out there too. Um, we're very thankful for all that is done out there. Uh, they do a great job, and they're the reason that I, quite frankly, people yeah. go, you do a great job. No, I'm just lucky enough to have people work for me that make yeah. me look damn good. Yeah. Um, they they do a great job, and, you know, Ken, you mentioned 16 years. It's hard to believe that it's been 16 right. years. April 11th, I was appointed unanimously by the, the Board of County Commissioners, ran in 2006 that same year, and won the, won the election. And, you know, 16 years, it's hard to fathom, but on day, the day after that 16, that date of October, uh, April 11th, that makes me the second longest serving sheriff in the history of Spokane County. Right. Bill, or, yeah, Bill uh, Riley is the, is the number one. Right. And I tell you, if I could, if I was... A shadow of that man, I will hold my head up because, folks, that was the best sheriff of Spokane County, Sheriff Riley. Well, you have both in private polling, I know, and public polling, which is called the election, at least in the last few years, always been around the 85%. Tell me who else gets 85% of the vote. I mean, that just is overwhelming and says so much. I'd like to know who the other 15% are out there, but... I can tell you, 7.5% uh, on the extreme left and right. <laughs> okay. I knew you'd have an answer. Ozzy, again, thank you very much for all that you and your men and women do. Thank you. All right. Thanks for watching the Sheriff's Report with Kent Adams hosting this time. See you next time.